Our next panelist will discuss their experiences and the ways we can make our society more equitable and inclusive, particularly for women. Please welcome to the stage moderator Wei Yi Qian of Brit Media and panelist Fernando Medina, Mayor of Lisbon. We can all applaud them. <laughs> Celia Blawell, Deputy Mayor for Environment for the City of Paris. Mariana Lili Patlan Velasquez of the Mexico City Women for Climate Mentorship Program. And Shir Ash, member of the Tel Aviv Mentorship Program. Thank you for them. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. And uh, Mayor Medina just recently announced the C40 is Women for Climate Mentorship Program. And this is also one of your first commitments to the C40 city. So why do you think that the representation of women, especially young women, important in this climate action decision process and how would that benefit the city of Lisbon? Oh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to, to be here today speaking in this panel. Uh, basically by two reasons. First, because I think it is a great idea um, bringing the women to specifically to this debate and in this project in concrete is, is, is a very, very good idea. And uh, we need talent. We need talent solving problems. We need equality for having sustainable societies. So this program makes everything about. And I think the best example for, for our for our good decision on this program is precisely what Sheer is going to tell us about it. Because um, I was yesterday in the panel of the jury where we had the very hard job of judging between 10 uh, projects. But if you can look at those projects, uh, they are amazing. Amazing, each one of them. Uh, because they are solving concrete issues, they are very innovative, very creative approaches and um, we'll try to, to get some, even the ones that didn't go to France and Tel Aviv, because they quite want to address real problems of, of our cities. And um, even if they are not succeeded on the first time, on the second, on the third, they can be succeeded on the fourth. So our role is to support and to, to, to create the opportunity for them to, 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 to build their ideas, because if they are successful, we are going to help millions of people around the world. Mm. You also agreed to the deadline of C40s at two, uh, 220, uh, two, 2020. And um, how do you think that the gender um, inclusivity issue factor um, into the climate action process? Oh, I think it's, it, it's a key issue because sustainability is not a, is not a univocal world. Uh, it's not possible to advance when we talk about environmental sustainability and we don't talk about um, sustainability from a social point of view or from economic point of view. From a social point of view, discrimination and fighting against all forms of discrimination is not only talking about minorities on race or, or, on, uh, or other dimensions. It's talking about the ability of each citizen to be a real, an effective 100% a citizen in their city. And uh, I think the, the situation that we are now in developed, in, in developed countries, in rich countries, is that we made a, a lot of progresses on law, but when we look at the numbers, at different access to power, we see huge, huge differences. It's not, it's not a question that, well, it is in the law that everyone should receive the same salary for the same job. But when we go see, obviously there are differences in jobs and much more men are on leading positions on the boards of companies or uh, in the boards of uh, on power positions in organizations. Um, and this type of, of change that is much more cultural, that is much more difficult, uh, it's not going to be made on ease in the sense it's not, it's not going to happen without a big fight, but I think that fight is critical to us. Uh, um, let me tell you, for when, when I ran for the first time on elections, it was the first time that we have 24 parishes that are running at the same time that the city, and it was the first time that we have not equal lists, but more important than that. We put, it was completely equality on the, run, on the people that were running for presidents 
of the parish. And when we go to the list to the municipal council, the, the same. The next election is going to be 50-50. So number one, number two, number three, it's going to be alternated. Um, when we go to the, to the jobs inside the city council, uh, much more uh, positions of direction since the top to the bottom, uh, m there is a much more presence of women than men at this moment. Uh, and I think that is a good thing. Um, it's, uh, I think we should go, but I'm not, uh, uh, I don't have the illusion mm -hmm. that uh, this is all spread in society. It is not. Um, and it it's frankly it scares me when I look to the figures and I see, uh, for instance, when we look at education, uh, in Portugal, for instance, the, the, the percentage of success of women along the, the education levels, it's amazing because at the finish of upper secondary, there are more women finishing upper secondary than it was supposed with the age court. Um, then when we go to higher education, 60% of graduates are women, 40% are men. So that should have a, a clear direct representation on power positions. Mm. And I think that is critical to put, to put the city forward to, to achieve our, our goals in all levels. And I think this is going to be, this is, um, a key debate for the, for the future, a key battle. Mm. As a member, also as a C40s family, you have a wide range and a wide network of mayors, um, including as well as more than 20 female mayors in the world. Um, what are you most excited to exchange with them or learn from them? I just want to, to say something to complete the previous question. Um, I think one, uh, one of the things that is for me more clear and we should be focused is that uh, equity ex allow everyone to be a full, a full body citizen regardless of gender or whatever, it's not a question of women. Uh, mm. I know that I'm a minority in this panel, but probably should be another man here also. Uh, because those questions, they are questions of everyone. It's a question of society, it's a question of my city, it's a question of living together. It's not a question, uh, discrimination is not a question of minorities that are discriminated, it's a question of everyone that is a citizen. Um, and that, that's the way we see it, so I'm very pleased to, to this, to be our first measure as a C40 uh, city. Uh, second question that you made about why and what we expect. It is clear that uh, all the cities in the world, we basically face more or less the same problems. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you ask to 10 different mayors what are their problems, if you go to the number 10, probably you are going to see something very similar to the others. The very difference is the scale of the problems, the starting points, the scale, the area, but fighting climate change, fighting uh, exclusion, fighting the, um, the, the, the problems with the growth strategies and the creating and retaining talent mm. in these cities, they are common everywhere. They are common to Asia, to Europe, to the United States. Mm. Um, that's why you see so many progressive mayors. Uh, just, just look at this fact. Even at the national level, mm. we, are, we are coming to the past in many countries or in a national approach. When you go to cities, we see completely different energy even conservative, even mayors elected by conservative parties, many of them, they have progressive agendas um, because that's the life of the cities. So what we expect basically is to have, uh, to learn a lot, uh, to know much more what others are doing, uh, to learn a lot with the cities um, and uh, in every field to mobility, to fighting gender inequality, um, uh, fighting exclusion, uh, building the routes for growth, and uh, try to use what is now the voice of Lisbon, that is, fortunately we are in a good moment, a lot of people is coming to Lisbon, want to know more about Lisbon, and try to use that platform as a voice mm -hmm. for the sustainability agenda. Okay, thank you very much. You. And for Madame Blauel, um, the C40's Women for Climate Mentorship Program aims to connect the pioneering woman with the next generation of leaders, so why do you think that kind of collaboration is important? And do you personally have a mentor or someone who inspires you in your life? Well, hello, uh, everybody. Yeah, it was really important for, part, for Paris within the C40 to participate to this Women for, uh, for Climate sorry, Challenge because I think in my answer, I would probably uh, 
completely or roughly completely agree with what was said in the former panel by, by Carmen Menustomo. When we created that program, I think first it was to make women more uh, visible because we women are very much involved to tackle climate change. Uh, we do it, um, I guess we are actors of this movement of the society. We do it with many different titles and functions and the ladies we had yesterday in the room was just uh, showing that really different faces, horizon we were coming from. But still the world is uh, uh, still, I think, ignoring uh, that woman. So, um, uh, I remember uh, I remember that uh, a guy from a big French uh, private company, maybe he's here, so I'm not going to say too much, but told me once it would so much to hire more women in his company, but the woman didn't want to take the degrees. So there are not women in the innovative world, which is so untrue. So we have to show that there are women doing and there are women, women with really, really different faces. I, I, I just like... a. I, I, I was laughing a lot at the former, um, at the former uh, panel because I remember coming here six years ago as a deputy mayor and people not even saying hello to me when I was entering meeting room and maybe because I was just having an internship here. So um, I think it's really important to say that we women are really different, uh, but we can do it. So that was the first thing. And second thing was definitely to uh, support this program and to say, women, you dare doing it. And actually, I was the mentee of a really uh, uh, interesting woman. She's from Paris. She has um, created a floating platform to put it on the Paris channel. We actually uh, uh, put it on the channels uh, five days ago. And it's about having a new way of um, knowing your neighborhoods, but also having vegetation to protect birds, insects, and fishes. And, and actually, she was really shy at the beginning, not knowing if that project was worth. And, and I think that's what the program helps. We were women together saying, of course, you have to go. And we still need that, unfortunately. And could you also tell us briefly about the main actions that Paris City is taking uh, to make like uh, urban mobility and transportation probably gender inclusive? and how climate change and environment are included in the policy making process? Well, right now we are implementing our third climate action plan that has been voted one year ago and the idea is to fit completely to the Paris Agreement. So we're reaching carbon neutrality at 100% renewable energy by 2050, meaning we are addressing all the fields of everyday life in Paris. And I would say we have four plus one pillars of action, which means public policies in the fields of mobility, building retrofit, energy, uh, obviously, and also food and agriculture, plus the mobilization pillar, because right now the idea is to get on board all the people of Paris in that global movement, because it's in our cultural, um, political way uh, we're seeing politics that we, th we have to do things with people. But it's also a need because 80% of the GG mission in Paris, we cannot have uh, an effect on it, it was just with uh, city council decision. We need people to get on board with us. And definitely, we think it at uh, an inclusive policy. It's about the planet, but it's also about social justice. It's about um, benefits right now for the city, about health, tackling energy poverty, and all that, that thing, and thinking about future generations. So we, we go on these two feeds. And definitely, I think it's also inclusive on the gender agenda when you think just about one thing, energy poverty in the social housing. We know now that um, with our, pol po with our policies, we are reducing by 30% on average the tenants bill. Uh, and, and then when, we, when you sh mix that with the idea that uh, in Paris we have some areas where in the social housing fields you have more than 40% of women living on their own with their kids, it makes the difference mm, at the right. end of the month. So this is how we're mixing uh, the, uh, the policies. Great, thank you very much, Madam Blaudet. And also for Marianne Lee, who is a mentee um, in the mentorship program this year in Mexico City. So can you tell us a bit about how a mega city like Mexico City can adopt a more um, sustainable um, urban mobility approach and can be gender inclusive in its policies? Yeah, sure. So big city, big trouble. But I think that also small and medium cities has a lot of similar troubles to face, like in, in my city. So even though we're a 21 million people city, so some of the, pro the problems may sound familiar from some of the people that's here, regardless the city they came from. For example, uh, bad air quality, 
a uh, never-ending commuting, uh, a lack of affordable housing, time poverty, and all of them are somehow linked with transportation. So we already know that walking and cycling are the most efficient, affordable, and happiest way to move to a place to another. However, if we don't provide a safe environment that allows people to choose them instead of cars, we're actually not moving to any low carbon mobility model at all. So I think that one of the key aspects or the key things we can do to address climate change in an equitable way is to provide affordable access to opportunities in cities. And this only can be achieved through sustainable urban mobility and gender sensitive transportation policies. Well, thank you. And also we all talk about how the importance of gender and how like women can get more affected by climate change and more sensitive to sustainable urban alternatives. So how exactly can a city adopt a more gender sensitive or inclusive approach to its urban mobility? I think that the cities can take two opportunities and it's better if they mix them. The first is taking into account all quantitative aspects related with our travel experience on, on cities. Like each one of us experiment the city in different ways. It depends on our age, our preferences, but also gender has a big influence on how we are part or not are part of, 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 of a city. So I think that the first thing is taking into account the preference regarding gender and, and the age of each people to construct a better, a better uh, transportation policies. And the second thing is that we, we already know this, but we need to increase the number of women taking leading but also operative positions in the transport sector from planning, designing, operating, evaluating, monitoring, transportation policies, we need to be more included because we have the total capacity to do it and to do it properly. So I think that these two elements combined could be a good point to start to, to construct a better uh, gender-sensitive transportation policies in all cities, from Mexico City to Lisbon to Paris, Tel Aviv, and everywhere else. Like, we need to take transportation seriously. And this next question is for Shia Esh from uh, Israel at uh, Tel Aviv. Um, so you're, you are starting a project called ARI this year, which aims to reduce air pollution by greening buildings. So can you explain us more about that project and yeah. how is that going to change uh, the future urban mobility? Sure. Uh, so we're developing modular um, moss tiles that are designed to be installed on the exterior of already existing buildings. The tiles actually uh, consist of a smart autonomous system um, filtering the air from breathable pollutants and carbon dioxide. So we use our technology to provide the moss with all its needs in order to accelerate its natural filtering um, abilities. Um, and actually, the inspiration for this project um, naturally derives from nature. Yeah. And as we started to look into this problem of air pollution, uh, we realized that nature has been dealing with this problem for millions of years now. And so uh, as we started to really dive into it and search for the right plant, the, the, the best fit, uh, to tackle this problem, uh, we ended up uh, really doing a series of research and uh, by the end we're using uh, moss, which is really an extraordinary plant. Mm. And I think we all like are here because um, saw sort of, like the impor importance of uh, joining forces in terms of tackling uh, climate challenges. Um, and so why do you think that for question for uh, every one of you that it's important <laughs> to uh, like collaborate on this uh, specific theme. Well, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term the tragedy of the common. It's an economical term. Um, it's a problem in which every individual tries to reap the greatest um, benefit out of a certain resource. And as the demand for the resource grows, it may come to a point where it overwhelms the supply. And so that's where we all start to lose. So I think that the situation today with air pollution is yet another example for the tragedy of the common. And this, this tragedy is even greater since it has direct effect 
on our well-being and our health. So, you know, um, the atmosphere is truly vast. And it seems to us that if we emit, you know, just a little smoke, it won't really be able to change anything. But as more and more particles and um, pollution was emitted around the world, uh, it, we have arrived to a point where we are very close to its limits. So my partner Liron and I are currently working on a project that will hopefully take us one step closer to a solution for this massive problem. But we can't do it by ourselves. Um, just like it took many, many factories, um, vehicles, and many other pollution emitters to abuse this resource, it would take a lot, uh, like a combination of a massive reduction in emissions and also filters and many other solutions to actually reverse the damage that has been done. So the way I see it, this applies to almost every aspect regarding um, climate work. Um, and that's why I think it's crucial that we do join forces uh, in, the, in this journey towards achieving our goals and making a real change. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, and probably a lot of people from the audience might also be curious to know uh, if we want to start little for uh, climate change, but maybe not being an entrepreneur or maybe not being at the policymaking level, where shall we start? Do you have any uh, idea or suggestions for uh, young women in the audience? Sorry, I didn't get it. Like if we want to be responsible for environment and start to take action from doing little things. Um, do you have some suggestions for young women in the audience? Shall I, shall I answer? Yeah. <laughs> Any advice? I would say just there. <laughs> That's what you said before. I mean, we all have ideas, but I think we women always think that, no, maybe someone already thought about it, or maybe I'm not good enough, or I'm not an engineer. So just dare and dream and, and just knock at some doors and you'll find men and women to help you. I think just go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.